The steampunk genre's influence goes beyond any one medium. In fact, the movement can be found everywhere. One such example of steampunk's presence can be witnessed in the comic book industry. Comic books and steampunk have a long and storied history, history together, maybe because both have, until recently, held a position of fringe popularity in popular culture. Perhaps the two also blend well since both are about mixing aspects of the future with the ways of the past. Comic books are behind steampunk's recent rise in popularity. This analysis is a look at the relationship between comic books and the steampunk's movement and how steampunk's use in comic books pushed the movement into popularity. In his Huffington Post article, What the Hell is Steampunk? William Higgins states, it's all about mixing old and new, fusing the usability of modern technology with the design aesthetic and philosophy of the Victorian age. Steampunk's partnership with comic books is important because the combination allows the reader to physically see something old take on a bold new twist. This theme covers the core concept of steampunk. The seven-issue limited series Legendary does just this. Author Bill Willingham creates a world where technology nor society has advanced past the Victorian era. This world includes reimagined characters such as Vampirella, the Green Hornet, Cato, Flash Gordon, Zorro, Red Sonja, and many more. Another example of steampunk's core concept at work is the graphic novel League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, which takes literary classics such as The Invisible Man and Captain Nemo and places them in an interconnected steampunk world. As early as 1989, and Brian Augustine in DC Comics, Gotham by Gaslight, and as late as 2015 in Bill Williams' Legendary, the world of steampunk has reimagined beloved heroes, villains, and stories of the past century in a way which feels both totally new and old-fashioned. However, steampunk has more to offer than rehashed ideas. Comic books like Hellboy and The Amazing Screw on Head, both written by Mike Mignola, both carry heavy steampunk influences such as often clunky outdated machinery like liter literal steam-powered jetpack. Even the titular screw on head from the amazing screw on head can be reduced to a piece of technology well ahead of its time. There are other countless adventures in steampunk graphic novels, all of which help to widen the lore of the genre. Another reason comic books favor steampunk more than other mediums would be the highly visual aspect comic books and graphic novels contain. While the steampunk movement continues to grow in popularity, the genre has yet to obtain enough popularity to garner enough attention for a movie or even a television show, leaving comic books and stage plays as the only visual medium in which steampunk can be easily accessed. Steampunk relies heavily on these visual aspects that thrive as a genre. Novels, short stories, and even poetry are all valid forms of literature. However, graphic novels have the advantage in a genre in which style is 75% of the point. The steampunk movement is about the old and the new being used to create an altogether different experience. Thanks to the success of steampunk in the comic book medium, an audience previously unreached by the genre can now experience a world as yet undiscovered. Another key tenet of the steampunk mythos is the concept of a strange new wilderness which may look familiar yet remain untamed. Steampunk owes this popularity in part to Alan Moore and Kevin O'Neill and their work on League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. According to Corey Gross, League also came at the exact right time. The critical mass of retro Victorianism coincided with the real emergence of the internet into the popular conscious. He posits that the emergence of the internet and the rapid speed in which technology become available within such a short time paved the way for a new emergence and popularity for the steampunk genre.